Sports with Dorks. It's in the glob. Every week, bangers are coming at you. And I'm not just talking about fights. I'm talking about podcasts. The greatest podcast on the planet. Every week, every Friday, bringing you the hottest MMA talk. It is... Sports with Dorks Fight Talk. I am Glizzy Globber. Hello there once again. There is Schwizzy Schwizzle, Baker Extraordinaire, but, and there is Fizzy Force, seeing beyond the trees once again, as always. Sports with Dorks Fight Talk. Look at those numbers. Look at those pretty little numbers. Hello there, gang. Um... Once what's again, up? Was uh making money or losing it? You know, not gonna lie. No, we're making money. Uh, Force is making money. Uh, not gonna lie. When I made uh, uh. uh the title of the episode last week, like climbing out of uh, sports betting hell, I knew I was like totally just gonna Jinx. go negative next week. Yeah, I knew it. I fucking knew it as soon as I put it out there. But it is what it is. You know, I'm still technically in the green, but you know, whatever. Uh, Isaiah, night me. Must be nice. Must be nice. It's a little bit nice, buddy. It's pretty Must comforting. Nice. I got this whopping 1.8 something units to play with each week. Oh, but baby, look at me with the wiggle room. Fuck you, Forrest. Don't say anything. Fuck you. Um, rude jerk. Uh, Actually, I was gonna say, on average, you probably have about like one point nine to two point seven. Oh well, thanks, bud. To play with per week, so I mean that's extra it. units profit, should I say? I mean, I feel like playing like a- five or six units every week, and you have a solid two or so extra every week. Isaiah's fucking taking money from anybody he can on the street <laughs> to fucking play every week, but. We'll get into that later. I feel like you were just condescending me right there with the way you were talking, but you know, it's whatever. I'll take it as a compliment, but no, it wasn't condescending. I was honestly trying to give you a vamp because I think that you're doing better than you think on average. Oh, well, thanks, bud. Thanks. Appreciate that. But it definitely, it came off condescending. So be careful how you talk to people like that. Anyways, uh, uh, fuck me. Right. So sorry, dude. Fuck me right in my ass. Anytime, buddy. Uh, so Friday month. Comedy. Pride Month. Comedy. <laughs> Isaiah's just me last episode. Pride Month. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, no, banger banger fights last week, though, gang. Real, real bangers. Oh, my God. Beat them up fights. Me about it. I mean, oh, yeah. Did we watch them together? Well, no. Rico was over here, and we no. watched them. That's what it was. I listened to them on my way up to uh, a little retreat getaway and uh i was i was listening to them and it was just like oh knockout i was like oh my fuck I, I think yeah. there were what six four or five four knockouts in the first prelims dude oh the prelims, prelims. Were on one i thought you were going to talk about the whole card i was like uh there was like yeah there was like four knockouts a second it felt like i mean even fucking even the fights that did end in like a submission like the kevin holland fight like he was rocking the fuck out of the dirty bird before then Oh uh, yes, the submission fights that that one was hard to listen to. Um, the, the submission was a good one. Like the, the literally the even the the decisions were bad. Like a lot of the decisions were kind of like bloodbaths, like exciting to watch, even though it went all three rounds. I mean, they were they were fantastic. I mean, right from the beginning, your first fight of the night was a performance of the night. Uh, from Roman Dolodaz. Then you got Phil Haas getting a performance of the night. It, it, Phil Haas. Beat the fuck out of Duran win. Uh, I, it was one of those fights where I was watching it and Phil Haas was beating him so fucking badly that, and I, I saw him like just Duran like getting hit and being rocked and doing those stumbles, but then like swinging back, you know, and trying to go at it. And, and fucking, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, this is so brutal. And then I saw, and I was like, oh fuck, Herb Dean's the ref, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I was oh, like, He's, yeah, that's not good. It's never going to end. something brutal is happening and you got Herb Dean as the ref, you're dead. Sorry. <laughs> Dude, yes. There's literally a meme that I saw of, like, that guy getting fucked up. And then it was just, like, a picture of Herb Dean, like, barbecuing in the ring. Just, like... <laughs> Uh, i don't know he's just like literally 100 percent. that was hilarious i saw that meme as well yeah yeah you saw it you saw it it's just so funny like he's never never there to save a fighter nowadays hilarious uh there were some major favorites on the card and they got dubs like major favorites like guys that were minus 580s like cody stammen 
uh, knocks out Eddie Wineland like in less than a minute, and then they still give him fifty k. It's like I think you were supposed to do that, buddy. I don't think that should be. I mean, they were just giving away money. There's oh Ricardo Ramos with the spinning back elbow. What? That's like his signature move too. I bet you forgot about the spinning back elbow knockout because there were so many in this card. You remember that one? The spinning back elbow? No, I don't think so because there's too many fucking knockouts. Um, Court McGee got starched bad. Um, minute thirty four by Jeremiah Wells. Oh yeah, this is another thing the UFC's been doing. They did that. They did this on this card like big time. So the UFC will take guys that grind the fuck out of people and wrestle fuck them in their fights, right? And they'll put them up against knockout artists. And it's kind of like, all right, um, so you're going to either f- expose this knockout artist for us, you know, and let us know if he's actually the real deal or not, or we're going to punish you for wrestle fucking all of our knockout artists. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> Court McGee was on the wrong end of that. <laughs> He's been wrestle fucking too many people, and they're like, "Here's Jeremiah Wells. Can you try to expose him for us, please?" <laughs> he just got knocked the fuck out, dude. That was a bad one. Um, all right, on to the bets now. On to the actual money. Sorry, those. Uh, oh, by the way, I think like out of s- one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, <laughs> out of seven fights, five of them were per, uh, performance or knockouts of the night. Yo, all of them were performances of the night. So, except for one. Yeah, except for uh, well, two female. Well, fights. two. One was fight of the night. The other didn't get one. Yeah, and then on the main card, no, no, and then on the main card we got one, well, two, card, yeah. three, four, one. five. Yeah. So, dude, what is that? That's ten times 50,000 they gave out $500,000 in bonuses this last Saturday Dana was you think feeling they just, generous the whole fighters don't get paid enough finally caught up to them and they're like you know what let's just throw this week in there and then everybody will shut their mouth well definitely they didn't think anybody would shut their mouth uh that's for damn sure nobody's ever, ever does. Yeah, no, right. they're gonna keep calling oh, them stingy yeah. but then you're like they gave away a half a million last Saturday just because it's like not enough that's not enough. They need to get paid like NFL players, even though 25 into the years of the NFL existing, they were getting paid pennies. Anyways, um, so, or I should say 30. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's kind of funny when you look at it that way. But Calvin Cater versus Josh Emmett, it was the main event, and it was controversial. So, let's get into it. <laughs> Who fucking won in the main event? Controversial. People are saying it was a robbery. Do you agree with it? Forrest, I'll let you go first. Do you agree with the controversial decision that Josh Emmett won? I love won? to go first in UFC things because I know the least. Um, so <laughs> one thing I noticed throughout the fight when I was watching it, semi-drunk too, so I, I should just preface with that. Um, I was watching the fight, and after every round almost, I feel like Josh Emmett walked away, and he's like, number one, dude. Yeah. Won that. I'm number one. Well, his, and so like when he won at the end, it felt like it shouldn't have been a surprise, but I still just, my gut was just screaming. He got robbed to Calvin Cater. So I don't know. I feel like it could have been a Cater. I feel like I need to rewatch the fight, not semi drunk and actually see where the points were allocated because I could have saw it going either way. And Josh Emmett did look pretty fresh at the end of every round. That's my two cents. Isaiah, what were you saying real quick before I go in? It didn't help that his fucking corner was telling him every second that he would go back out there. Oh, yeah, we won where we run uh, those last two rounds and he's just getting in his head. I don't. OK, it worked out. It paid off. But I think that is not a smart decision, in my opinion. You can't you don't know. You don't know if you won those rounds and those rounds were too close. Yes, he probably won two out of the three rounds. No, I think Cater should have won because we got my money on Cater. And of course, I'm going to be biased in that manner. But um, completely, tra- completely transparent here. I want I thought Cater should have won because I wanted Cater to win. That's about it. No, I agree. Um, with so you. I, I wanted Cater to win, too. I should probably preface with that as well. I will say this. I jumped into the fight late 
on Saturday. So when I jumped in live, it was already round four. So I watched rounds four and five first. And from the end, the end of those rounds, just by jumping in and watching those rounds first, I was like, oh, Kate, Cater fucked him up. Look at his face. Those two rounds were easily Cater. Uh, you know, the uh, dude, he had no left eye. No he left probably, eye. I don't know how you can see out of it. Yeah. He'd never fought championship rounds. You could see by the end of the fourth and the fifth, like, yeah, he was fresh, but he was getting hit a lot. A lot, a lot. Cater couldn't put anything significant together. But so then I rewatched the fight. And personally, I think Cater won three of five uh, rounds, personally. But it's not a, a, a robbery. However, I will say this. I think Josh Emmett didn't think he won the fight either. Um, he thought he did when he went over over sure there. Sure, fucking but, talked like it after the fight. Well, but when they said 48-47 Cater, he gave this look like, oh, they're going to actually give it to him. That's bullshit. But I think deep down in his heart, it's because he knew he lost three of those rounds. But that's personally my opinion. I don't think it's a robbery, but it's just shitty for Cater. The dark horse now having to go back to the fucking drawing board and fight like another three fights before he gets his fucking title shot. It's, it's bullshit. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really like. I don't know why, but I don't really like Josh Emmett that much. I don't no, know. No, he why. seems like a bully. He, he, but he's so not. He seems like a really sweet guy. Always, like, always seems so sweet. But there's just something about him. I'm like, space. You he's whine. Space. You're like a whiner. Kind of just like a weird douchiness. Yeah, it's like a douchey whinerness. Yeah, not a bully. A douche. like you're not being cocky. But you're just not timing the things you're doing right, or you're not reading the room correctly. It's, it's a just weird. Cringe. Holding up number one after every round, it's a little cliche and douchey. A little cringe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, a close cr- call down the guy that he wants, yes. wants to fight next. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's trying to call out. Like, I felt that. He's trying to call out like Volkanovsky, and it's like, buddy, what? you will get you literally cater- destroyed. Cater yeah. is not Volkanovsky level. Volkanovsky would bend Cater into a pretzel. Yeah, no, it's a bad fight all around. So I don't know, man. Emmett has like the Henry Cejudo factory uh, factory, <laughs> the Henry, <laughs> Henry Cejudo factor where I'm just like, you're just like kind of cringy, dude. I don't know why. I'm just like not excited to watch That's a fight. The fuck up. Dude. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> totally. Stop talking and fucking fight. I don't want to hear you talk anymore. Totally. It's not even justified at all. It's not even like a ni- it's not nice to talk about. It's literally just like he's a nice guy, I think. But you literally hear him talking. You're just like, shut up. Shut, shut the up. fuck it's up. Not- <laughs> Why are you still talking? Why are you still talking? Stop yes. talking. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Totally. Um, all right. Let's just talk about fun shit now. Um, they both got 50 K. So I, I, I stand corrected. Actually, Dana gave out 55 or $550,000 because they both got 50 each. So Goodness. yeah, Damn. It's not a little bit of money. It's a lot of money. Um, all right. Kevin smoking. Holland trailblazer, Kevin Holland versus Tim. The dirty bird means, uh, that was a painful to watch, dude. Pa- dude it was painful for Tim means. Welterweight Fight. Kevin Hollins, gang. Welterweight Kevin Hollins is a real. Welcome to the UFC. Dude, seriously, though. Seriously, though, buddy. That was his second fight, right? At Welterweight, yes. Dude, and it. Back to back wins. Back to ba- back dubs. Before that. And they're dude... not. They're, it wasn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. no. I just want to gush real quick. Go because ahead. Because I, I, I like Dirty Bird. I picked Dirty Bird. But like. um. The way he put Dirty Bird away in that manner uh, was terrifying. And Tim Kevin Holland is coming off two really good wins uh, with Tim Means and Alex Oliveira. Those Nasty. are not nobodies. Those are not scrubs. Nasty. And they're, obviously, they're later into their career, but still, you are too. So is Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland was probably on the brink of being dropped by the UFC, right? Well, there was a minute there at middleweight. He did lose, like, what, two or three in a row? And now, mm-hmm. granted, it's to guys like Derek Brunson, Marvin Vittori. You know what I mean? He had a draw against Kyle Dukakis. He lost to Marvin Vittori. He lost to Derek Brunson. Uh, he beat nobodies before that. Yeah, um, I mean, he did. Darren beat, Stewart. He, he knocked out Jacare Souza. That was pretty nasty. Um, and that was back in 2000. Uh, 18 buddy we don't know that was 2020 oh wait yeah that was that was 2020 my bad no worries that's okay but still it's like um 
Yeah, but he did beat some guys at middleweight, but then you see it. Like, against, like, the cream of the crop, Derek Brunson, Marvin fucking Vittori, who, let's just put it out there, Marvin Vittori literally gives anybody at middleweight a hard time. He gives Mm -hmm. Israel Adesanya a hard time. So The dude's a pit bull. Totally. So then, and Holland's, Kevin Holland's like, yo, I don't even cut weight. Like, I think he shows up to fight week for one, when he was fighting at middleweight, he, like, showed up less than 200 pounds. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he's cutting like 10 pounds to get to middleweight is literally nothing. He would just start working out and he would just make weight. He didn't have to cut weight at middleweight. So now he's at welterweight and he has to cut a little bit. But bro, he like looks shredded. looks good. Yeah, he looks cut. Yeah. More about he toned out. I think he, he got rid of baby fat, totally. uh, water weight, all that shit. He's got an 81 inch reach also. So that's insane, actually. Yeah, Holy fuck. terrifying. Yeah, I think that's a wingspan. John Dude, homeboy's got like a seven foot reach almost. Yeah. John Jones, who uh, is how tall like, is he? I'm not sure. Can uh, can somebody look that up, please? Yeah, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Um, so John Jones, who is like, you know, notoriously has like the He's longest six, six three. Jesus. He's got 81 inch reach. That's, that's insane, insane, dude. Yeah. So John. That's sorry. Crazy. Sorry, go ahead. It, no, it is it is oh, sorry. crazy. So sorry. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. It's like a spider. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Shut up. I'm talking. <laughs> sorry. John Jones, who notoriously is like has like the longest reach in the UFC, I think is like 86 or something like that. Uh, look that up if you can. Uh, but I I know it's not that it's like 84 and a half, dude. It's really not that much longer than Kevin Holland's, dude. And no, John Jones no. fights at heavyweight. So he's grappling up. And Christensen uh, has an 85 inch reach longest in the UFC. Damn. That's kind of crazy. Um, Six, eight is how tall he is. And he has an 85 inch reach. Okay. That's Over seven feet. That's crazy. Sorry. Go that's ahead. insane. That's literally craziness. However, Kevin Holland at welterweight is like light years longer than everybody else. So that's yep. crazy. I mean, Kamar Usman is like, yeah, I mean, he's so stubby compared to him. And the thing with Kevin Holland is, like, you can see why the Darce chokes work. His arms are long. So, <laughs> shout out to Kevin Holland. Got 50K. Uh, walking motherfucking Buckley, Wait, dude. I have one more note before we move oh, yeah. to the next one. Uh, Kevin Holland, I saw a tweet of him, like, doing that nasty elbow where he had pretty much the dude's head in his hand and then threw the elbow. Yeah. Um, and somebody tweeted on under it like uh, he should fight Fialho next. Mm. And the person replied. Some person replied right after that and was like, "He Fialho would get washed." Yeah. I, after that last fight, it's pretty tough to not agree with that. But seemed like it'd still be kind of an interesting fight to see. Dude, if that last fight didn't happen, do you know how on board I would be for that? Do you know how yeah. on board I would be? But right now. Fialo had so many fights in a row. His noodle has been rocked a couple times. He needs to chill. He needs to get his chin back before he fights in the UFC again. Because if not, if he keeps fighting too frequently, he's going to lose his chin quickly. Because his style, he kind of like has that that high guard where he's like, yeah, go ahead and punch me. But you will eat a couple through that. And if you're eating a couple (laughs) every other Saturday... It adds up really quickly. So very quick. Rest up, Fialo. But Fialo versus Holland in the future. Mm, sign me up. Big sign me up. Also, Kevin he Holland is. just stopped like another crackhead robbery like what? three days ago, I think. Like another one, as in like two multiple? Oh, dude. This is like seems like it's a weekly thing for him. It's almost to the point where I'm like, I think he's setting these up. Um <laughs> Yeah, I could be wrong, but no, yeah. Three days ago, he stopped a crackhead that was robbing a store again. So, uh, Kevin Holland. uh, The day after his fight? I think so. I think so. That would be Saturday. What? Can you imagine winning a fight in the UFC and somebody's trying to rob the store? You're trying to buy a juice set, dude? And you're just like, fuck you, dude. I'm trying to buy this juice. I ain't trying to go to another store. Two days ago, Kevin Holland details most recent crime stoppage heroics in Austin. Oh, Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Sunday. 
So they keep Dana White calls Kevin Holland a superhero after stopping crime for the fourth time. Jesus. Yeah, they're the fourth, fourth time. Yeah, they're asking him if At he's what like. What point a, do you become a vigilante? No, they were asking him. They're like, "Are you a superhero? Are you like Superman or Batman?" And he's like, "Nah, I'm black man." Uh, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. So yeah, dude. He's like stopping crime, fighting crime. Where, where does he live? Is it like a sketchy area or something? Probably, Texas, Probably, right? Texas or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's from Texas. So yeah, yeah, Texas. So that's enough said right there, Texas. No, <laughs> enough said. Joaquin Buckley. I mean, this was one of those fights. This was literally one of those fights where they're like, oh, Albert Durayev, uh, you're really good at grappling, right? All right. Well, we got to make sure that Joaquin Buckley, we, you you sort him out for us and you're going to expose that he can't grapple, buddy. So Durayev, go ahead and uh, grapple up Joaquin Buckley. Fucking Joaquin. Fuck this guy up. We're sick of him fucking Russian ass wrestling people to death. Fuck him up. And uh, Joaqu- Joaquin Buckley definitely fucked him up. That was a good ass fight. Joaquin Buckley threw a fucking kick off of his thigh and spun around and hit and kicked him with his other foot. So yeah, it was pretty dirty. Yeah, and guess what? He's knocked somebody out like that before. Uh, granted, it was the one where the homeboy was holding on to his kick and he planted off his hand that was holding his kick and spinning wheel kick knocked him out. But yes. yeah, that was pretty dirty. It was Wait, dirty. wasn't this the one that had the nasty eye or was it both nasty eye? No, big nasty eye. It stopped from Dr. Stoppage. Yeah, that's what stopped it, right? Yep. That's why I just remembered that complete eye swell, like nothing like shut, like disgust. It looks like it's going to pop if it gets punched. Yeah, yeah. No, the doctor literally came well, in. Josh Emmett's eye was pretty bad, too. Yeah. Albert Dryev had a really fucked up. eye. You want to know the difference, though? Is Emmett like if he forced as hard as he could, he could like you could see his eyeball between yeah. his eyelids a little bit. Derive the literally the re- the doctor came in and you could see for one second like he moved the bulge that was like his eyebrow up, and you could see the eyelid was completely sh- swollen shut. So it's like no matter what, even if the doctor like pushed up, he could not see his eyeball. So he's like, nah, <laughs> fight's over, fight's over. It's over. You literally cannot use your eyeball. It's over. It's like that's so sketch. It is. You can actually lose your sight at a certain point. So it is. That's yeah. where the doctor has to come and be like, nah, you literally can't see his eyeball <laughs> under the swelling. He probably broke his orbital. Like, yeah, you don't get swelling like that unless something's broken. And orbital is like one of the most fragile bones in the body. Right. Along with like the stuff behind your nose or whatever. Totally. Cartilage. Totally. Um, Car- yeah, cartilage bone. is bone. So cartilage. That's what we learned in uh, school. No, but. <laughs> this- is it? What is it? Wait, wait a second. Yeah, sharks are basically. Made- science? Sharks, are just- basically sharks are made, made of bones, bone. dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big bones. <laughs> yeah. Flimsy bones, dude. Didn't you learn that in fucking science, bro? Come on. Fucking- yeah, dude. My bad. My bad. I'll shut the Uh oh. Uh, anyways. Yeah, no. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the nastiest eyes, though, where, like, even when the doctor came in, I was like, nah, that's that's cool. I'm not going to be even be upset with you at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. Make him go home, dude. Make yeah, go home. Come on. Just sit this one out, bud. No, literally, the doctor didn't even give it a second look. He literally looked at his eye for like a second, looked at the ref and was like, nah, it's over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was nasty. Um, let's see. Uh, split decision, whatever. Sucks. Whatever. Uh, Julian Marquez hey. got fucking starched bad. Uh, yeah, right yeah he got night night. Uh, don't tell fucking uh, Miley Cyrus about that one. Um, uh, Joe Lauzon, uh Here's the thing about him. He's a bitch. Oh, man. Hey, man. They're one and one. How dare you? They're one and one. Please let that fight happen. Sorry, he didn't pull out last time. Yeah, he did. He pulled out the last time before that. So Cerrone pulled out the first time. Lozon pulled out the second time. So are they gonna fight? That was low key dumb. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh. So. Wait, what? Uh, Just kidding. Tony Kelly, dude, talk about insult to injury. So Tony Kelly goes in, misses weight, right? Misses weight. Oh, wolf. Then 
is like a dickhead. Yeah, so loses 20% of his purse, is like a dickhead, and is like flipping off the camera like, yeah, fuck you guys. I don't give a fuck. You know, uh, Adrian Yanez is from Texas, so they're all going crazy for him. He's like, fuck you. He's being a dickhead. Then he goes in, gets knocked out, so loses, loses, and also loses like at least 20% of his purse. Gets knocked out in front of everybody, and everybody's all happy as fuck because he's a dickhead. And then Adrian Yanez also gets fifty thousand dollars on top of it. Damn, dude. Yanez made out with what sixty, seventy k at least, and Kelly's walking away with what five. Ooh, Yanez is probably looking at fucking six digits, honestly. At Damn. like with a fifty k performance bonus and twenty percent of his opponent's purse. Yeah, he's looking like if not at very close to six digits, you know. Boss. Yeah, it's, and if he fucking did it right with some Instagram sponsorships and whatnot leading up to the fight, yeah, for sure, sitting mm. pretty above six figures for sure. Shout out that fucking that 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 tile company in your local town. That's an easy like fucking five k. You know what I mean? Seriously, those guys do that shit. They make no, honestly, bang. they do. Yeah, they Dude, make. I'm thinking bang. about starting. I'm thinking about starting calling fucking radio stations and faking being people who have problems and stuff just to get easy 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dude, yeah. Shout yeah, out to yeah. anybody who's thinking about sponsoring a new UFC podcast because this one, mm, yeah, yeah, everything. Down I've already up. reached out to Manscaped. They, they, I mean, they're already calling us, bro. They're ringing at the knocking think on our door. Shaver, did. I could. Can you guys reach out to? Uh, I told them they needed to sweeten the deal before we took it though. So if any other sponsors were like thinking about it, just know that they're Robert my bar. You should reach out to Hush. <laughs> I do like that. I like Hush. I like uh, White Label would be sick, dude. Honestly, one that I think we might be able to get is fucking Yo Delta. But anyway, this is a talk for another time. Scrub Moving forward, buddies. um, do we want to talk about all these kick-ass um, knockouts real quick in the prelim? Just be like, oh, that oh. guy knocked him out. It looked fucking great. We did. Hey, buddy. We did. We, yeah, did. we did. I already went over that. Uh, yeah, I shit. guess. But I mean, yeah. No, we literally in did. a different order. In a different <laughs> and you want to go in the other the other direction? <laughs> no, we'll start over. Me. No, we'll start at the other end. I'm just. I'm just. So that Emmett fight, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, are we gonna start with the preliminary card no, then Isaiah, on the next week? Isaiah's just frustrated fight? because we're gonna have to talk about the money that we lost this last week. So oh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, is it numbers time, dude? <laughs> it's numbers time. Strap in, Isaiah. Oh, <laughs> retard alert! Retard alert, class. <laughs> oh man. This just in, folks. It wasn't great. Uh, <laughs> for so, I lost way more than Isaiah, but I'm still like sitting prettier than him. So that's why he's mad. So fucking dumb, boys. <laughs> you lost significantly less than I lost this week, but still are sitting worse than me. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh fuck! I have no more money. I literally put the rest of my FanDuel purse on Calvin Cater. I got zero dollars. Oh. cents now. I'm done. Oh. I'm not gonna lie. I took the Lauzon uh, money that I could have like bet on somebody and put it on Cater again. So I had two oh. bets for Cater this week. If we're talking like, like logically, like my actual purse, that's what I did, and it didn't Woof. pan out well. No, it didn't. Uh, in the fantasy football world, or I mean, in the fantasy uh, fucking UFC world, we don't on the podcast pay attention to that. We no, just we pay don't. attention to the fights that happened and the money that we made or could have made if that's all we did. <laughs> that's right. Stuck to the plan. That's my thing is like stick to the plan. That's what I'm doing moving forward because that cater thing ended badly for me. Yeah. But well, well, that's back to back weeks. Um, now you need to remember that you did this because we did that back for uh, what's his face that Robert has a hard on for. Fialo, um, fuck Fialo, we, fuck. We almost. Did, I mean, we yeah, I did the same it. thing. Yep, didn't turn out well. The cater one's so frustrating too, because like, especially when you put money on him, it's so hard to un, uh, like, think your thought of being like, no, he won. This is bullshit. I just got robbed. It's so hard to not think that thought. Like literally, anytime I put money on a guy and there's a close controversial loss, I'm just like, nah, bullshit. Mm-hmm. He won. And then every time you rewatch it, you're like. He run, he won rounds three, four, and five. I don't know what the fuck you saw. I don't know what the fuck you saw. You just get pissed. No, off. it is not. Adesanya won that fight, dude. Adesanya totally won that fight because I won money. That's yes, why. Yes, yes, yes. Because then I'm a little bit richer. Um, 
so yeah, we all lost out on the cater fight. That's obvious. Negative one unit. Uh, Lozon and Cerrone didn't fight, so nothing. Uh, let's see. Holland got us a little bit of something, but he was a big fucking favorite, so only 0. 0.3 units. Uh, 0. 0.38 for me and Forrest. Uh, I lost money on Drive. You guys got a pretty 1.8 units from uh, uh, fucking Buckley. That's nice. Uh oh, it's Let's boy. Ismagalov won by split decision. Nice. Yeah, because the dumb boy couldn't pronounce his name or punch good. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, 0.63. That's a nice little something. And then negative one for both me and Isaiah for betting on Fuck. Marquez over Rodriguez. Fuck. Fucking Cuban Missile Crisis, dude. Get less cool of a nickname and we won't bet on it. Honestly, you. dude, he Fuck. sounded so cool. It's it so did cool. sound Wait, cool. Is he Cuban? Forrest, did you find out if he's Cuban? He is. Fuck the Cubanness, which <laughs> brings us to our running totals. Running, our running to- totals last week at the end of the week. If you guys remember, you were there, you watched it. I, I remember said, last week negative one point eight. Cuban missile crisis was Cuban. Yeah, yeah. Just talk over the part where I said you're negative. Uh, negative one point eight for Isaiah at the end of last week. Glob was sitting pretty at a three point eight. I was sitting very pretty at a twelve point five. We'll move forward to this week now. After those wins that Glob just said, I'm sitting. Pretty at a fourteen point eight seven units up. That is a fourteen point eight seven. Oh, After ten weeks of doing this, now we've officially hit the ten week voice of me recording our picks. I'm sitting fourteen units up. We bet about five Damn. or six a week, so that's pretty hefty. Blob, on the other hand, also sitting pretty one point eight units up. Hey. He's fucking in the green. Still in the We've green. been going back and forth all season. Glob bets off his gut. I pick safe money. That's a cop out. Isaiah bets whatever. I don't know his logic anymore. <laughs> um, which yeah. brings us to my favorite part of all of these numbers. Fights guess right versus fights guess wrong. We've, we've officially bet on 51 fights, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in these 10 weeks that we've been recording. Wow. I'm sitting at 73% win ratio on safe money. So most of the time I take safe money. Occasionally I'll branch out because I've been balling. Um, Glob, he's sitting at 55%. So his gut is taking him in the right direction. Barely better than a coin flip. Isaiah, on the other hand, he is doing worse than a coin flip. Uh, his oh, uh, He's gotten 26 wrong and 25 right. And so Isaiah's sitting at 49% win ratio. <laughs> That's what I thought you were gonna drop. Forty-nine percent. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> it does hurt. It does hurt. Damn. But statistically speaking, Isaiah, this is the this is what I wrote down, ready for this cast. Statistically speaking, if you flip a coin every time, in the long run, it'll be 50-50, right? Like statistically speaking, but if you actually looked at any moment in time within those 1000 flips, there's a chance that you see 20 in a row that were wrong, you know? So even though Isaiah is doing worse than a coin flip at this point, 50, 50, maybe we're just looking at the 10 weeks where he's doing wrong. You never know. Good point. The next 10 weeks could be where he goes up to 70%. You don't know. Ladies you and know what I have to say to that. They don't ask how, they ask how many, okay? <laughs> well, how many is 51 fights, 26 wrong? Shut the fuck right. up. <laughs> I'm the numbers guy. You can't say how many to me. You're like, let me have my cool thing and let it be there. <laughs> I said they don't ask that for us. I was, Nobody I, asks. I, I was Literally. expecting you to be like, yo, look, 10 weeks, one of those weeks I let Courtney pick. <laughs> it's her fault. <laughs> it's all her fault. I think you... Went just about average for yourself on that week. <laughs> oh fuck! All right. Um, fuck. My fun is over. I'm sorry, Isaiah. Oh no, we're gonna. Keep- no, you've just gotten the shitty end of the block, and I swear the first six weeks that we recorded this, you were uh, pretty drunk by the time we got there, and you were just throwing throwing darts. So that's a good point. You ready to throw some more dar- darts and make fun of each other again next week? All right, let's talk about that. Oh, this is the week Isaiah goes positive, all right? 
This is the week Isaiah goes positive. Oh no, my shit's not updating. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I'm sorry for shitting on you, Isaiah. I feel bad about it now. Isaiah, you've been completely shitted it on. How do you feel about that? Um, go fuck yourself. <laughs> All right, Armin Sarukian versus Metsetsu Gamrot. Who? Okay, so this is the battle of the names. Okay, Sarukian, Sarusian, Sarusian, Chorizo, um, Armin Chorizo, no, Armin Sarukian, he's my guy, got to go with him, he's a minus 285 favorite, he's also been just getting it done, and Gamrot, I think he's only won like one time in the UFC, so yeah. Yeah, I'm taking safe money on this one too, uh, negative 285, so what I'm slowly finding out about betting on safe money is you're safe up to about the 200 mark. Or I mean, I mean, I mean, at, at a minimum, at the two hundred mark, it seems pretty safe. If 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 a guy is down two hundred, negative two hundred, then like that's a, a pretty safe bet. Actually, that's really fucking safe. So I, I know that you occasionally see the negative six or the negative uh, nine hundred or positive eight hundred people, but about two hundred is the mark where it's like take the safe money, dude. No, yeah, I would say two to one is when it starts getting to a point where it's like, you're, you're almost, you gotta be big flexor with a nice little green wad like you Forrest, to start betting on anybody. That's a beyond two to one underdog. Cause then it's just like, you're really rolling the dice. Um, so we're all obviously going with Saruki. And so let's just move on to one where this is going to get really interesting where we start, you know, the rubber meets the road on that theory. Neil Magny versus Shavkat Rachmanov. Wait, hold on. Who'd you guys pick? Sarukian. Who okay. did you pick, Isaiah? Sarukian? Sarukian. Okay, cool. Neil Magny versus Shavkat Rachmanov. Okay. This is a tough fucking fight for me to pick, boys. Really tough. Yeah. Yeah, I took Magny, but it was very hard for me to do that. Um Romanov is on a tear, and he's somebody I don't want to ever bet against. But Neil Magny, uh, Rock Romanov too. Tour. I would just like to preface with he's undefeated. Yeah, I know, I know. But in the UFC, only four fights, which is still kind of a lot because they are not necessarily against one hundred percent chumps. Yeah, I don't know. The dude's a, the dude's scary. Well, he's very scary, Shavkat Rachmanov. But I think Magny's coming off a pretty impressive win in his last fight. He goes to decision a lot. So, he has, well, first off, he has cardio for days. I think Rachmanov starts to slow down in his fights. He doesn't really go to decision a lot. Standing, I could see Magny having something to say. On the ground, it's interesting. Fuck, man. If I wasn't in, if I wasn't so close to being negative, I would easily bet on Neil Magny for sure because I think. I really think he has all the tools to expose somebody like Shavkat, but Vegas is forcing my hand to make me vote and take my bet with Shavkat Rachmanov. I agree. Isaiah, you're taking, taking safe money. You're taking Neil Magny. I'm taking Magny. Ooh. Dude, if if uh, I literally had more of a green, uh, a little bit of a green back. I would bet on Magni myself. You, you need to dig yourself out of a hole. So a plus 300 underdog getting a dub, which he easily could do. That would do it. That gets you right there, right there, right back in the game. Who doesn't love sports betting, right? All right. <clears throat> Ooh, <laughs> fuck. Talk about a pick em. Josh Parisian versus Alan Bodat. Uh, heavyweight fight. Minus 105 to minus 115. Dude. That's a tough pick em right there. Uh, I'm taking Breezing. Well, Isaiah didn't think it was that tough. No, I didn't. Uh, well, you get a little bit more fight. back if he wins. Wait, wait. Parisian? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I mean, I know he got his ass knocked out by uh, Don Tillmaze in the last fight, but, um, I need him to pull it out. That's, that's pretty much it. Also, I also don't like Allen that much. 
Neither do I. He hasn't really impressed too much. Like at all. I've seen him lose twice, whereas the other guys yeah. only lost once. And of one of those fights, he actually put up a pretty good fight until getting knocked the fuck out. Um, so, yeah. Damn, I do have to go with Parisian also. I guess I'm going to go with also with Josh Parisian. I'll take or, safe money. Going with Alan. So I'm going uh, Boudoir. Boudoir. Yeah. Boudoir. All right. Um, that's, that's a tough one, though. I don't really know a lot about them, and you guys didn't give me a lot to go off of. They're both. So I'm just going to take safe money on this. Let's just put it this way. They're not going to be fighting for the heavyweight championship anytime soon. This is going to go to a decision more than likely. It'll be very boring, probably. Yep. Or it's going to be awesome. It's either going to be round one, not very technical at all, super quick fight, somebody gets knocked the fuck out, or three round, boring as fuck, heavyweight fight where they just do nothing. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, if, it, if, it, if nobody's been knocked out in the first round, go outside for 10 minutes. Yep. Go ahead and take a smoke break. Hit your slab <laughs> pen. Go make, some, go make a grilled cheese. Yeah, make some make some drinks when we don't bet for money and we just bet off of like the fucking card and we just do our pickums with like our friend group. You know, I always bet off of like the most intense face for the people I don't care about. You know, yeah, totally. it's like who looks most intense. Both these guys look like they're about to put up the most boring fight we've ever watched. Yes. So. Yeah. They're both just like <laughs> and they're both like kind of just like not even mean mugging. Just like, hey, I have a beard. I'm kind of husky. Yeah. I'm here to fight. Yeah, they're totally both just like, I guess I fight. I guess you could watch me if you want to. There's probably something cooler on, <laughs> you know, like could you imagine making it like your fucking dream comes true, dude. You're in the UFC. You're fighting your heart out. Right. And you just want everyone from your high school, from your college, yes. like everybody you've ever known to know you. And that's the fucking photo the UFC puts up of you. Yeah, that's your you're just like, hey, I'm here to fight. I've, I'm in the UFC. I've heard Stranger Things is cool. You could watch that instead. That's literally the looks they have on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stranger Things you drops July fourth, or I mean July first, but like I, I'm July second. So like when you're done with that, if you want to rewatch my fight, I'm there. I'm is, on ESPN what July? Plus. What, what's what July? Is it God damn it. <laughs> okay. All right, we're getting out of everywhere. We're talking. We're making calendar jokes. Um, holy shit. <laughs> Is this oh wow, what a main card. Okay, um wow, fucking stacked main card. Uh Tiago Moises versus Christos Giagos. Whoa, Christos Giagos. Okay. Let me just say this. Tiago Moises gave Islam Makachev a tough fight, and that's what yeah. always makes it like to where I want to bet on him. But I've seen him lose a lot too. Same. Still gonna put my money on him though. Both of these guys' last fights were was a loss, huh? Man, mm. shit. Same with the loss, the card. last one too. Both losses. It's gonna be such a good card. This is uh, like the the card of the comeback, comeback card. Yeah, it's comeback or get cut. Everyone's a loss, so it's like whoever wins is a comeback. Yeah, comeback. Peter or and get... Emmett, no, no. This is this is the you get a, get a week of revamping because next next week's card and last week's card were just so good and going to be so good right. that they got to be like, well, let's throw a couple of nobodies up here and just see if whoever loses is going to get cut so we can yeah. get new blood because yeah. we need to do this eventually. Let's make a utility card for us where we just get to get all of our dirty work out of the way where it's like, you're cut, you get to stay, you're cut, you get to stay. Both of you, boring fight, you're both cut. Hey, um, hey do you guys remember how cool UFC 275 was? Look, how, Remember how cool UFC 275 was this entire time they go through this main card? Just like, eh, it's like, Yeah, the, the, if that last card was Dana White's card that he put on for the fans, this one's Hunter Campbell's where he's like, look, I got to get rid of some contracts my fucking paperwork starting to pile up on my desk <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> He's trying to take care of the backlog right now yeah yeah totally totally get get boudoir in with parisian <laughs> we'll make it look cool because we'll throw on magnet rachmanov and magni yeah, and sheruzian yeah. versus garmon but the rest Wait. will be legit just garbage yes, they're like, against garbage main event and co-main event are bangers but literally everything under it is trash <laughs> Maybe that's why he gave out 550 last last fight card. He's like, yo, we gotta throw money so people think that the UFC puts out nothing but bangers because oh this next God. card a little weak. So funny, dude. They preemptively were getting people ready for this next week. 
<laughs> they're like playing with all flex position right now. That's hilarious. <laughs> they're playing. They got a bunch of Rashad pennies on the undercard. <laughs> These are the eighth oh round God. keepers going in. Yo, bro, that's hilarious. Okay, I would like to note though, you were just clicked into this fight. So if you could click back into that again real quick and yeah. just scroll a little bit down. One thing I always look at is average fight time and knockdown average, just because I, I judge uh, how exciting a fight's going to be off those two numbers alone. Yeah. Both these guys are sitting at average fight time of at least two rounds, which screams boring fight in my head. Yep. And the knockdown average. Look at Kyogo. Zero, <sighs> zero percent knockdown. Dude, zero. Those are percentages. Oh, God. Give me noises. Point two. Kyogo, boy. I think zero percent chance of a knockdown in all of his fights, dude. That's so frustrating. And he still gets <laughs> wins by TKOs. It's got to come right. from ground and pound. It's all from ground and pound. So it's just like, <sighs> God, I hope there's going to go to the ground and then it's going to probably last at least two rounds. Yeah. Just an FYI. I think you're right. No, I, and both of these guys grapple. They're both notorious grapplers. So, I mean, if it goes to the ground, I guess I got to give it to Tiago Moises. So that's literally my reasoning is you're right. I think it'll be boring. It will go to the ground. Tiago will have the advantage. That's where I'm at with that. Tiago, let's go. Yeah. Tiago Force. So everyone's taking Tiago. Tiago. Yeah. I'm going safe money Moises. Yep. Yeah. Tiago Moises. This is the week of the. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Tiago Moises. That's oh, okay. I got you. Sorry, I, I don't know UFC, so I didn't know the first thing. Nope, no worries. Tiago Moises, not Chris Jess. Yeah, gotcha. Go. Okay. <sighs> it's not like it's in big words right there. Yeah, Tiago. I'm looking okay. at my screen, all right? Excel spreadsheet numbers right over here. He also okay, heard us saying. It's really blurry on my screen. Is it blurry on yours, Isaiah? Also, I can read blur. Uh, the difference between Tiago and Giago is not very much, so I understand where you're coming from, Forrest. Thank you. Um, Thank you. One has an S. Don't don't pander to him. The, that, yeah, good point. Thank that, you. That is true. Um, so, <laughs> nope, no. Nope. When you're right, you're right, Isaiah. When you're right, you're right. Um, you idiot. Okay. I'm usually wrong. So, so in this fight, <laughs> I mean. Umar Norma Gamedov. Do we need to really even dwell on it anymore? Yeah, dude, I got I got man, I got madness mains, madness, madnesses. So is You're uh, here's my mess. question: Is he an exciting fighter, or does he just go to the ground and then stomp? Is um, one. Uh, he because he fuss, also mate. has a zero knockdown average. <laughs> He's smash. He's two smish. fucking zero knockdown averages on this card. Yep, he smish. All he does smish. is wrestle fuck and smish. Just like Khabib. He literally just like Khabib. Wrestle fuck and smish. Which mm -hmm. is boring. So I think they want to cut this guy, uh, Nate Manis. And so they're just going to make Norma, uh, Umar Normagomedov fuck his face with his fucking cup. So um, I don't know why, though. I mean, Manis has beaten Tony Gravely with the round two knockout. And that's the last fight. It was in 2021. I mean, I mean this is a good fight. He's literally only lost once. There, it's 14 and one versus 14 and zero. Oh. This should and he's be never a good lost fight. in the UFC. This should be a good fight, but I think Norma Gamadov is. Just, it's just, bro. It will be a miracle if Nate wins. So are you taking him on Isaiah? Like literally for real? God no, I'd dude. Get you I, out of the I, hole pretty quick. It it would for sure. Um, at this how point much, how much, how much, on a Tuesday, a five dollar bet pays out thirty six. How much? How much units would I lose if I took uh, if I took one? And we lost? bet one unit on every fight, and I'd gain how many units? Six point two five if he won. Yeah. Fuck. So you would gain six units. That would make up for all of these fights Gang. and half of your loss. Gang, I literally love. I love that we just had that moment where Isaiah had. The moment that every degenerate gambler has, <laughs> <laughs> like literally, Isaiah, take dude, the I safe like money, those dude. odds. It's Isaiah, yeah. take the safe money. Literally. These odds are there for a reason to tell you this is the fight that you don't want to guess on, bro. This, this is the fight you should for sure go favorite on. But bro, I just got through house. saying negative two hundred is like a dead giveaway for me oh. now. After looking at ten weeks of numbers, 
Negative 200 is a pretty dead giveaway. And in one of these Saturdays, I'm going to put this all together for you in a nice I'm tight honest, spreadsheet. I'm not listening. Thinking about possibly getting out of the hole. Oh my god, literally. Why don't you just flip a coin then, Mr. Coin Flipper? <laughs> That's so funny to me, dude. That He's literally a coin. <laughs> He's flipping a coin. Oh, mommy's turn. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take your advice first. Uh, Save money. Save money. I'll go nerd. Good job. Now. Good job. That's You're only gonna so... win like a, a penny, but it'll Should count. I do best two out of three? No. You should take the save money do and walk it. away. Take, try to throw you. daddy's turn. Daddy's turn. Hold two on. out of three. Two out of three. Two out of three. Two out of three. Two uh, out of three. Uh, mommy's turn. Mommy's turn. All right. And okay. Save money. Glob, save Dude, money as well or yeah, no? Yeah, save money. Holy okay. shit. <laughs> That's Everyone's so funny. Nerd I'd be so disappointed. Bro, when you game. did the whole math, like, how much do I lose? One unit? <laughs> how much do I make? 6.25? And you just saw the calculation go on up your head. The odds are just like, if I win. <laughs> it's one of those ones where you bet $5 on Nergamendov, but then you throw 50 cents on Manus. And it, it kind of cancels out. Either way, you kind of make some money. Totally. Totally. That's hey. so funny, dude. Holy I was shit. Like, Bitch, native stuff. I was about to get so heated if Isaiah just goes into the hole even further on this fight. <laughs> so it would only funny. be one at possibly crawling out of six spots. This is one of those moments where you're getting peer pressure to do the right thing. I don't so like it. funny, dude. Holy fuck. That made me laugh. It's literally, this is that is the exact reaction that Vegas wants to get out of people <laughs> from a fight Straight like this. Because that's why they have to make this fight so tasty is because nobody's betting on him. So they have to bank that there's guys like you out there. Isaiah is like. I mean, six to one. The guy's only lost <laughs> once in his career. I mean, come on. I could throw one thousand dollars down and, and win a uh, used car. Yeah. <laughs> he beat he beat fucking uh, Tech Nine Junior. Come on, bro. <laughs> I was just gonna say the next guy looks like Khalid. Oh my god! Holy fuck! All right, we're having too Sun's much. Sun's going fun. down. Um, Kurt, uh, Chris. The Kurt, longest day of the year. Happy summer solstice. Happy summer Sun's solstice, gang. Um, Chris Curtis. Versus Hidalfo Vieira. Let me just say this. Chris Curtis, as long as he doesn't lose in the UFC, I think he's unbeatable. I don't know what the fuck to say, dude. My man. I'm pretty sure if you don't lose, you will be un undefeated. I just want to make that statement. Very good point. You know, I numbers got to chime in now. Uh, Isaiah is pretty accurate in that statement. I think he is correct in that one. I may have to double check with the Tokyo partners. However. I say we flip a coin, though. Um, Jesus Christ, Hidalfo Vieira is big. Um. They're both coming off of wins. Daddy's turn. I'm right. Roberts. An idiot. Mm, this is where it gets tough. Hidalfo Vieira is so good at grappling. Look at that. 88. He's also got like 20 pounds on him almost. 88. Him yeah, this fight, he'll be a little bit lighter. But 88% of his wins are from submission. Do it. But Chris Curtis has 56% of his wins coming from KO. Do it. I'm taking safe money. Curtis. Hidalfo Vera has never gone to decision, at least in the UFC. Do it. Damn. Do it. You've taken safe money on pretty much everything, dude. Like, do it. If you're gonna gamble, there's one that's probably gonna like cancel out your wins. Yeah, me. Although Nergamendov is only gonna win you like a penny. So lose if you were betting a dollar on every bet. Right talking, now, with the odds, this is the way I look at it when it comes to the last fight. Negative 285, negative 390, negative 115, negative 255. That means you're winning like 90 cents to $1.50. All it takes is one wrong unit bet, and that 150-ish becomes just 50 cents. Totally. totally. So, But if you are going to gamble, at least you did save money the rest of the way. That's a good point. Yeah, you make me want to take mains. Duh, I don't think that's what he was trying to convince. But uh, you did a good job at it. Uh, I got to take Chris Curtis. He has so much momentum. So much momentum. Got to take we all Chris took Curtis. Curtis. Okay, we're all taking Curtis. All of us. So just to, just to recap, we took the same bets on everything except for the Rock Mendov. And the uh, fuck, I can't pronounce any of these names. Parisian fight. Parsons. Per yeah, yeah par Parisian. 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 Yeah, Parisian. Persian. Persian. 
No one want to take Buda. Buda. Anyways, fucking French people. Get the I fuck really out of here. Take Nathan. Get out of here before I take Nathan. We're not taking Nathan's except for the hot dogs in our ass immediately as soon as the episode's over. What? That popped Isaiah's head up. Boofing he glizzies? Got, boofing glizzies. He got excited. We're going to be doing that while you're checking the description down below. Please make sure you do it because it's the greatest fight talk podcast on the planet. We're going to be seeing you guys in the next one. Until then, bye bye. Bye bye. So I'm coming over with glizzies.